Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy and today we're checking out the i9-7900X again today. We're putting it up against the Ryzen 7 1700 because the 1700 is less than a third the price. Yeah, that's right. In New Zealand, the 7900X is three times the price of the Ryzen 1700. But does it have three times the performance? Well, that's what we're going to be answering here today. So let's talk about these two CPUs then. So the 7900X is a 10 core 20 thread CPU with a 3.3 gigahertz base clock, a 4.3 gigahertz turbo clock, and a 4.5 gigahertz turbo max. Now the Ryzen 7 1700 on the other hand is an 8 core 16 thread CPU with a 3 gigahertz base clock and a 3.7 gigahertz turbo clock and both of them are unlocked. Now there are some big differences between these two CPUs. So the first is with the memory. So the 7900X supports quad channel memory whereas the 1700 only supports dual channel. There's also a different uh, difference in the PCIe lane. So the 7900X supports 44 whereas the Ryzen 1700 only supports 24. But this also means that you require an X299 motherboard with the 7900X, whereas you can get a B350 or X370 motherboard for the Ryzen 1700, which can be half the price in some cases. Now the 7900X has a 10 megabyte L2 cache, the 1700 has a 4 megabyte uh, L2 cache, but when it comes to the L3 cache, you get 13.75 on the 7900X, whereas you get 16 megabytes over on the Ryzen 1700. So it actually does have the advantage when it comes to the L3 cache. Now let's talk about the uh, CPUs themselves in terms of how the lids are held on, basically. So the 7900X is not soldered down like the 1700 is. This uses a thermal interface material, so that means if you delid this, you'll see there's a sort of, um, like, a, like a thermal paste underneath it. Now that's not ideal, you'd rather than be soldered down. So the 1700 actually does have the advantage there, and that's a big issue a lot of people are having with the 7900X, is high temperatures, which we will talk about a bit later. But let's first talk about the test rigs. So, as you can see here, the uh, 7900X is tested with the Aorus Gaming 7 X299 motherboard, which is overall a pretty good motherboard. It just needs a few updates because there's a few things that are a bit funny with it. The 1700 was tested with the ASUS Crosshair 6 Hero X370, which I've only just started using. It's pretty nice so far. I really like it. No issues yet. Now, if you're wondering about the difference in the coolers, that is because I used, obviously, my H115i on the 7900X, which is basically what you need. You need an all-in-one with this uh, CPU or a really big air cooler. Whereas the 1700, I couldn't get it to fit because I didn't have a bracket. I didn't realize until after my testing. So I used the AMD stock cooler, the Spire, on the 1700, and that is taken into consideration when I come bring this video to the conclusion. Uh, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Now, as far as overclocking goes, the 7900X here went up to 4.7 gigahertz on all 10 cores with no issues at all, and it was sitting at about 86 degrees Celsius with the H115i that I have. Uh, that's still pretty toasty, though, to with a very, very good cooler, so keep that in mind. The 1700, on the other hand, that went up to 4 gigahertz on all 8 cores. That's pretty typical out of a Ryzen 7 CPU. And that was on the stock cooler, and it went up to 90 degrees Celsius. So you see, even with the stock cooler, the overclock Ryzen CPU was only 4 degrees hotter than the 7900X with a 280mm all-in-one. So yeah, those temps, the 7900X is a very hot CPU. Now with all that being said and done, let's jump into the benchmarks. I did them uh, both with these CPUs at their stock clocks and their overclock settings. And I did a bunch of sort of productivity ones and games and all mixed together. So let's jump in and see how these two CPUs perform.
there, it's a big win for the 7900X. There's no two ways about it. It had the clear advantage in all the productivity tests and in the games. However, that's to be expected. This has two extra cores than the 1700 and a much higher clock speed. That being said, it's not the gap I thought we would see. I thought it would be much bigger given the advantages the 7900X has and also that much larger price tag it comes with. So yeah, it's a good win for the 7900X, but the 1700 still did just fine. And if you're doing productivity stuff, obviously the 7900X will be better, but the 1700 wasn't that far behind. So it's not, you know, as big of a deal as I think a lot of people would make it out to be, especially when you bring price into it. The 1700 also tended to gain a lot more once it was overclocked than the 7900X, which is another thing to take into consideration. And that brings us nicely now to the conclusion and what do I make of these two CPUs? So right now at Playtech, you can pick up the i9-7900X for a low $1,599 New Zealand dollars. Wow. And you compare that to the Ryzen 7 1700, which comes in at $485 New Zealand dollars. Not only that, but the 7900X requires an X299 motherboard. And a good one at that, because I would recommend one that has at least an 8-pin and a 4-pin or an 8-pin and an 8-pin power connector, because this thing sucks a lot of juice, that's for sure. So that's a much more expensive motherboard compared to the B350 or X370 you could get with the Ryzen 7 1700. And on top of that, you will also need good cooling with the 7900X. I would say a big Noctua air cooler or something equivalent to that, or a 240 or 280 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler if you're not already gonna go for like custom water cooling or something like that. You're gonna need high-end cooling with the CPU. The 1700, on the other hand, you could get away with like a Hyper 212. Uh, basic or medium sort of priced air coolers will be just fine with the 1700. You can go for an all-in-one if you want, but it's not required. So yeah, all things considered, it's three times the price for just the CPU, but if you brought it all in, it would probably end up being like four times the price to go for the 7900X when you bring in all the cooling and the motherboards and everything else and you know quad channel memory which will cost you more but that's a given yeah it's just you're getting nowhere near the extra performance that all that extra cost warrants now if we throw price out of the window then the 7900x is a clear winner if price isn't a deal to you you know you don't care about money you just got money to burn and you just want the faster cpu then go for the 7900x for sure but the 1700 does a very very good job now there's other advantages for the 7900x like the quad channel memory extra pcie lanes that some that certain users will want to take advantage of but for people that don't care about those things the 1700 is the clear winner it's much better in the real world it's just the better value for money cpu by miles over the 7900x but as always that is just my opinion and i want to know what you guys think so in the comment section down below what do you think what do you think of this video what do you think of the 7900x so far and obviously by comparison the ryzen 7 1700 i mean which one would you guys go for maybe there's a lot of you guys out there with a lot more money than me that would just go for the 7900x hey i don't know now i thank you all for watching this video please subscribe to tech showdown if you haven't already and like the video and as always i'll see you guys next time